Hey everybody, welcome to video number two for this series. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build and install and run your very first simple cluster in Vitesse. So this is gonna be a very informative video if you're really interested in scaling your database with Vitesse. So let's get started by taking a look at the Vitesse documentation. So this is a great place to go if you want to learn more about Vitesse and how to install a cluster. So I'm gonna go over to the docs and a bunch of what I'm gonna do is basically inspired by stuff that comes from the docs here. But if you wanted to, let's say, kind of walk through and have sort of a text tutorial on this, you could come in and you could look at the getting started and you could look at different ways of, for example, installing Vitesse, right? So just know that this is a great resource that you can turn to if you're looking to figure out how to do this. But I'm gonna walk you through some steps on how to actually do this using an EC2 instance. So I think one of the reasons why using an EC2 instance for this is nice is because that will make it sort of easier for somebody else watching this video to follow along, right? Rather than being my specific setup with my computer, if you want, you can go on AWS and follow the exact same steps that I am doing. So hopefully this is very helpful and informative for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm here in my EC2 console uh, or in my EC2 UI, and I'm gonna go ahead and launch an instance just via the GUI interface here. So I'm gonna call this one, uh, ben Vitesse, so that's gonna be the name of it. I'm actually gonna say Ben Vitesse uh, main because later on I'm going to, in future videos, spin up other instances. For now, we're gonna just run it on one instance. I'm gonna run on Ubuntu version 2404. So feel free to choose the same one if you wanna follow along with me. I'm gonna do a bigger size machine here. So this is gonna be a C5.x large. So this has four vCPUs, eight gigs of memory. Uh, this is not super crazy powerful, but powerful enough to build and install the tests and run some simple test clusters on the actual machine. So for a key pair, right, you can use an existing key pair, but or you can also create a new one. So if you'd like to just follow along exactly, you can create a new one. I'm going to call this one Vitesse. Um, I'm going to say Ben Vitesse here. Ben Vitesse and RSA and a PEM file. So create and it should download uh, the key file for that that you can use to SSH into your machine later. I'm going to go ahead and allow HTTP traffic. Now this is something that in a real production system you might not want to do for the sake of security. You might want to be a little bit tighter with what network traffic is allowed to hit these nodes. But this is going to be very nice for testing because there is a web interface that you can use to look at what's going on with your instance. And for the purposes of testing, it'll be very nice to be able to just pull that up in the browser. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add a little bit more storage here. So you can go bigger if you want, but I'd recommend going with at least 20 or so gigabytes because we're going to need to download and install some stuff and, and all that. And then I think that's about good. And for now, I'm just going to launch a single instance of this. And in the future, uh, we'll actually spin up multiple instances to run on. OK, so that has been spun up here. And it's running already. So these instances can get going pretty quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And I'm also going to change a little bit of the security rules. So over here in security, I'm going to change, I'm going to click on the security group and I'm going to actually add a <coughs> rule to this so that we can connect to that web interface. So it's going to be custom TCP 1024 to 50,000. And this is, again, something you probably would not want to do in a production system, but this is going to make it so that I can connect to that web interface. So I'm just going to save this rule. And then what do I want to do next? Okay, so next I actually just want to connect to this instance. So go back to EC2, click on instances, click on this, and then to connect via SSH, what you would do is click on this connect button here. And if you're over on the SSH tab, it pre-creates a command for you to do SSH. So you can just click on this to copy it. And then I'm gonna go over to the terminal here. And I'm gonna to have to change to the downloads folder so that I'm in the same directory as that PEM file. And then I can do this, connect to the server. And oh, it actually, you need to probably change the permissions of this. So I'm gonna change the permissions of that Ben Vitesse, or what did I call that here? Yeah, right there. So then now with that, I can run this SSH command again, and now I am in on my server. Okay, so what are the next steps? What I'm gonna do is create a directory uh, that basically I'm gonna put the tests and all of the things that I'm doing, the scripts and so on into, 
And then I need to check out the tests from GitHub. And I'm gonna copy a couple of commands over for some of these steps here because there's a lot of commands to run. So this is going to clone that GitHub repository, get it on this EC2 instance. And then from here, we're gonna have to uh, go into this directory, download a bunch of dependencies, et cetera, and then finally get to the point where we can build this. So this is gonna take a little bit of time and you can come back and revisit once it's finished. Alrighty, so it is finished. Let's go into the Vitesse directory. And there's a bunch of stuff here. And like I said, there's a number of steps that we need to do before we can actually start running it. So one of the things I'm gonna do, if I say git branch, is I would actually be in the main branch by default, of course, but I want to check out the release 19. So as of when I'm recording this, so I think it's 19.0. As of recording this, Release 19 is the current stable release. Of course, in the future, you might want to check out whatever the current release is. But for now, I'm gonna do release 19. And then there's a whole bunch of things that I wanna run for installing prerequisites. And this is gonna take some time. It's a little bit boring. I'm gonna run an apt-get update to make sure things are up to date. And there's a whole bunch of dependencies that I'm gonna end up installing here. So I may cut around in this section a little bit so you don't have to follow everything. But this set of steps is I'm gonna be installing MySQL Server, etcd, which is gonna be needed for Vitesse, and a few other things, Golang. So this one is gonna take quite a while. Great, so that first round finished, and now there's another round of things that I wanna install. So what I wanna install here is a bunch of stuff for getting Python dev installed, pip, and a few other things. Eventually, in a future video, I'm gonna do some stuff where I run some Python scripts, so I wanna get that installed. And, oh, there's actually, couple of other things that I missed there. <clears throat> so let's see. Um, I want to do a, let's see, sudo apt get install dash y and also install these. Okay, and then I wanna make sure and install a few pip modules. So that's the MySQL client as well as Faker. And again, this is just for a future script that I'm gonna run. So once all of those get installed, what are some other things that I need to do? So I wanna stop a few services running on the system. So I wanna make sure that, and I just pasted a couple of these commands in here, that the MySQL service as well as the etcd service are stopped. So I don't want those running because I want my scripts that I'm gonna run that are in this Vitesse repository to do the job of pulling up MySQL and etcd. I also wanna make sure that I have node version 18 installed. And again, I'm pasting this in, it's kind of a lot of commands here, but there's a web user interface, like I talked about, to access your Vitesse cluster, and that uh, utilizes node, so I need to make sure that's installed. Another thing I need to do, again, pasting these commands in, is I want to disable app armor on this system. And these three commands should do that. And basically this last command here, what it should be doing is if the uh, if this last command prints out nothing, which in this case it printed out nothing, that means app armor has successfully been disabled. Okay, so after all of those steps, finally we are ready to build. So I'm gonna type make build. And this process is gonna take a little while, right? Cause it's uh, downloading some dependencies as well as building all of the tests. So depending on your machine, right, this may take uh, one minute, a couple of minutes, whatever the case may be. But once this is finished, you can come revisit and see uh, what we ended up with after building. All right, so it finished and it is built now. A few other things to do, and then I can actually start testing this out. So I want to make sure that the bin directory in here gets added to the path. So I'm gonna do this. And then if you wanna follow along, you can go into the examples directory. So Vitesse actually comes with a bunch of examples and then I'm gonna go into local. And in here, there's a bunch of scripts and actually we're gonna run a bunch of these uh, throughout this video series because these provide examples of spinning up a cluster, doing vertical sharding, doing horizontal sharding. So this is a great place to go to see some examples. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna source uh, this environment.sh and then pretty soon here, I am ready to actually run one of these scripts. So what I'm gonna show in this video is this first script, which is 101 initial cluster. So this is a script to get you up and running with a very basic cluster. And we'll go over this script in a little bit more detail in the next video, but this gets the topographic server set up, uh, VT control D, it actually gets the instances of MySQL set up. And finally, it pulls up a user interface for you to uh, take a look at what's going on with your cluster. So one thing that I need to do before doing this 
is I want to change in that env.sh common. Instead of the host name being hostname f, what I want to do is use the public DNS from my EC2 instance. So coming up here, going back to the main page for my instance, I'm going to copy this public DNS, IPv4 DNS, and bring that back over into here. And I'm going to say hostname equals this. And the reason why I'm replacing this is so that, remember previously I allowed uh, connections you know, basically from the public internet to hit this EC2 instance. And this will allow me to go to that URL to be able to view my admin panel since that's my new host name. Okay, so now I can run this script. And as it's going, I'll kind of talk you through what it's doing. So it's starting etcd. So this is the topo server. Uh, etcd is what keeps track of the uh, different elements of this cluster. It started up vt control d. So that it's there's a control server for sending commands to your cluster. It just started up a bunch of instances of MySQL as well as the VT tablets for those. It started up Orchestrator. So this is something that can handle issues that might come up with the server, right? What if a node goes down? Orchestrator can handle uh, that gracefully. And then what it's doing here at the end is it is getting the user interface ready. So, you know, the part that I said where you can go look at what's going on with your cluster, it's getting that ready. And at the end, it's going to spit out a URL for me to go to so that I can look at what's going on with this cluster here. So it's almost ready, should be done pretty soon. And then we can go look at what it says. Okay, great. So it's done. So what I should be able to do is in my browser, go here. And this is the reason why I had to open up those other ports is because this is running on port 14201. So kind of an unusual port for web stuff. But I'm going to go back to the browser and I'm going to just go to a new tab here. So new tab, we'll go to that URL and what it should bring up is this Vitesse interface. So what you can see here is you can kind of navigate and see, OK, what schemas do I have? So that simple script went and created three tables. They're empty tables or, or schemas. Uh, so C order, customer orders, the customer table and the product table. And you can go over here to tablets. And what this represents is it's actually running three VT tablets, which also means it's running three instances of MySQL. One of them is a primary and the other two are replicas. So one is a read only and one is a regular replica. So these you can think of like in that picture I drew in the last video, right? We have a primary and kind of two replicas sitting off to the side of it. So that's what's going on here. So in this Vitesse cluster, there are three instances of MySQL under management. And there is one gate, so one VT gate where you'd connect to to actually make queries and one key space. So in other words, one schema or database, which is called commerce. And in this, it has three tables. So before this video wraps up, I'm going to go back and I can actually try connecting to this cluster. And, and again, this is for testing. So all of the components of this cluster are just running on one server. So I'm going to use MySQL and do user of root. I'm going to do the port of, I believe it is 15306. And then lastly, for the protocol, I'm going to use TCP. So this is going to use the MySQL client to connect to that VT tablet. And I can do things like show databases, has a bunch of databases that commerce one is the one that the 101 script actually created. So I'll say use commerce show uh, tables and it's got three tables in it. Now these tables are all empty as of now. So I'll say select star from C order, for example, no rows, but that's okay. We'll populate it in the future. But I was able to start up this cluster and the way that this connection is working is it's connecting to the gate. And then when I make queries that need to talk to MySQL, it figures out what MySQL instance to send those to and sends the results back to me through the VT gate. All right, so I can exit from this. I believe that's everything I wanted to cover in this video, but I did gloss over a bunch of things. So that script pulled up a bunch of different components of Vitesse, and we haven't talked about in detail what all of those components are doing. So that's what I want to do in the next video. So stay tuned for that for more details there. And then after we'll get into talking about vertical sharding, horizontal sharding and more cool things that the test can do. So thanks for watching this video. Appreciate you being here and I'll talk to you in the next one.